Well, the Council of Twelve got together and decided that uh, it was time that you had your very own Chris Taylor Bowl. Uh, Here it is. Hey, thank you. And, and it's not an ordinary bowl. It's a groovy baby uh-huh. bowl. This is an honor. Yeah, um, yeah Chris, uh, I've seen you on Facebook. Very busy making all of these. And uh, yeah, it's, it's got that personal touch, so appreciate it. Uh, you're very, very yeah. welcome. So if I invite you uh, five years in a row, can I get a whole collection for my... my That's family? kind of the meta game. Okay. The bowl meta game. <laughs> All right, so yeah. Chris Taylor is uh, he's uh, uh, good to have you back here. Um, you were uh, you were at our uh, games first Game Speed Summit. Yes, the inaugural summit. As You've come a long way with this. This is pretty impressive. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a billion people watching you on. on the internet right now. <laughs> I hope so. so we're, su- we're at Super Bowl numbers now. Uh-huh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. So Chris is the creator of Total Annihilation, Dungeon Siege, and Supreme Commander. And in 2016, he left Wargaming to uh, strike out on his own. And it's been a secret what you've been up to. So tell us what you've been up to, Chris. Yeah, so, um, you know, developing games for 30 years, doing PC games, and every game kind of bigger than the one before, you know, and getting into strategy with Total Annihilation. And then Dungeon Siege was kind of a divergence into uh, RPGs. And coming back with Supreme Commander, you know, you get to a point where you're like, can I really just continue a trend where I just make bigger and bigger PC games? So I said, ah, you know, I want to do something that's got really just deep gameplay. I want to write all the code myself. So I want to go indie, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's everything from the game engine to, you know, the, just the whole thing. In fact, I even wrote the website that should be propping, and it's very, very simple. But, um, you know, just, just really hands-on doing it um, uh, kind of as an indie developer. Um, but you know, something that just broke the rules, you know, said, look, uh, I wanted to do it in a browser. I wanted to allow folks to be able to play my next game inside of a web browser. And then I, when I went to do it, I said, there's two problems. And if I can elaborate, there's so that this, means no download? No download. Okay. No updates. So it was like, um, the security is terrible. Folks can just break into a browser and look, inspect your JavaScript. Uh, and performance was vastly improved but it wasn't there yet. So my, this is what I'm here to tell you guys about today. I'm here to tell you about what I discovered over the last two years. Mm-hmm. And um, rather than just model, we'll, we'll, I'll, uh, we can go through Wait, the questions. What's the, the company's name is what? Well, so I'm announcing it today. It's Kanugi, K-A-N-O-O-G-I. Folks say to me, what does Kanugi mean? And I go, Kanugi doesn't mean, well, it, it's going to mean something now. But um, instead of using just English words and putting them together and having old associations in your mind, it's my theory that you need a brand new word to represent a brand new idea. Mm -hmm. So that's where Kanugi comes from. And you you have a game as well. I do. So I'm announcing not only, well, I'm actually announcing the game. The game is called Intergalactic Space Empire. So it's my next RTS game, okay? And it runs on my own platform called Kanugi. So I had no choice, really, because if you put a game on Steam or anywhere else, you can't run a game like that on a cloud. You can't run the actual instance of the game, what I call the GSI, the game server instance. You can't run that on something at Valve. You can only access back-end databases and so forth. So with this, I had to invent a back-end, so I built out a cloud-based gaming system that scales on top of the Google Cloud using their auto-scaling technology, and, uh, and that's global. So folks anywhere in the world can log in on their browser and play my game, and if the demand goes up in a particular region, that technology that they built will allow it to auto-scale, and, then it, and when they all go to bed, or however, and the sun moves around the planet, that system, and that's just, this is the future, and this is so amazing, and that's why I'm kind of here mm-hmm. to, at Games Week to talk about this. Yeah. It's, it's, it's beyond what uh, folks were talking about yesterday, progressive web apps. Progressive web app sells it so short. It's not really about the web, it's uh, the web browser, it's really about the cloud. Mm-hmm. So that's all impossible, right? Yeah, it's r- completely impossible. The fact <laughs> is, people have been talking about it for a decade, right? Mm-hmm. And what we all end up seeing when we go to the internet and we load up WebGL games or HTML5 games, we end up getting this stuff that we're like, this is kind of, this is just not what we thought this would be. So, but by bringing in the cloud, it mm-hmm. means that you can have a game that has a footprint, let's say, of multiple gigabytes. It could be a terabyte. It doesn't really matter because the cloud has only that one 
instance or copy of whatever it is that you're doing, and then folks are just getting representations of it on their browser, and it's rendered live in their browser. It's not a video compressed stream. It's done natively in the browser using WebGL, using um, the GPU. So you're using the cloud, but you're also taking advantage of uh, whatever processing is in the client. Yeah, and it's it's it was like a it was like a, a match made in heaven mm -hmm. to marry the GPU mm -hmm. and the cloud and having this pipe where you're just sending down this data and throwing it onto the GPU and suddenly you've got 60 frames per second mm -hmm. and I have that running in my pocket where I can show you a game on any phone that you have in today that you brought with you I can send you a link and you'll see the game running in about three seconds or so with no install mm -hmm. no anything and you're sitting or looking at something running at 60 frames per second on your on your smartphone. And it's an RTS, is it 2D graphics? It is. In fact, when I started this, I wanted to do something that was really avant-garde. Like I wanted to do something with just wireframe, literally like asteroids. That's where I started. Mm -hmm. It's grown from there mm -hmm. into uh, something much more visually uh, complex and it's probably gonna get, but it's all procedural. So I'm not downloading a bunch of bitmaps. This is the key. You cannot download a ton of data mm -hmm. to get first paint or to get to the first experience that someone can have. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really sort of, it's almost like going back to the 70s in a really weird way, but using 2019 technology, it makes for this sort of just really interesting uh, mm -hmm. th thing. It's just, it's really quite fascinating. It's hard to describe. Well, some years back, I, I think uh, Square Enix tried to do some of this with the uh, Chrome games, right? And yeah, there's been lots of, uh, it's like uh, lots of attempts to do this, but the problem was, of course, is trying to get the simulation, the game logic. I mean, when you start talking about pathfinding, collision detection, managing memory, you cannot do this in, the, in, a, in a browser, in a JavaScript language. With the V8 engine, it's gone it's, it's, I forget the multiple of performance. Tell us more what V8 is. V8 engine is the Google uh, browser JavaScript mm -hmm. engine. And they did a fantastic job of optimizing this engine. I mean, you can, um, you can, you can move a lot of data, but it still can't compete with C++ or C or any of the compiled languages that compile natively. So of course you do all that work on the cloud mm -hmm. and you don't try to do any of that. And so I'm using every trick in the book. I've been programming since my first computer in 1980, and my, my first professional job writing in x86 assembly, mm -hmm. and every trick I learned programming low-level assembly code, I'm bringing those tricks to this project, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. What web stack am I using? What, what's the technology? None of that. I'm building this stuff by hand. I'm handcrafting a stack that allows me to move data from the GSI down through the proxy server, the load balancers, the, basically the front end in the reverse direction down to the, down to the client. Mm -hmm. The load balancers are actually on the way up, but then it follows the same path on the way down to the client and bam, puts it on the screen. And I'm running servers in central USA and folks in London, Germany, Netherlands are playing with 150 millisecond round trip time to the GSI. So it's you're talking so fast you're kind of excited about this, aren't you? I, I'm more than excited. <laughs> if you'd seen me 20 years ago, you know, I'd be like, you know, take him away uh, to the nut house. I'm 52, and I'm still more excited, I think, than I, I should be. I should be on a gradual decline into, you know, into well, a... Why, did, why didn't you want to do more of the AAA sort of uh, arms race and graphics? It's a great question. It's a great question. But first of all, uh, when you've done it a bunch of times, it's kind of, I guess, if you were a director of making big sort of, you know, the two-hour feature films, and then you wanted to go do something artsy-fartsy, you know. But this thing actually kind of backfired on me because I started to do something kind of artsy-fartsy, avant-garde, you know, with deep, <laughs> deep game. I know, what does that even mean? Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, something with deep gameplay with very simple graphics, and now it's expanding backwards. And when you realize something profound, that two billion people, and that's today, could load up your game and play it anywhere in the world, your mind goes to like, oh, this is bigger than just making a silly vector graphics uh, game that runs in a web browser. My bandwidth, which is like, I am a, you know, on bytes, and I've got, a, I've got more compression to go, but I'm talking about 20 bytes a second. 20 bytes a second, and when a full-scale battle, when it goes completely insane, 4,000 projectiles and stuff is exploding everywhere, we're looking at 50K, okay, a second. Which means that folks out in rural areas all over the world, from India to 
to wherever, you know, the, the globe, you know, especially folks who are just getting their internets up and running, they can play the game. They can play a game on the Kanugi platform. So this platform. is r- uh, compatible across web browsers? Yes. Uh, everything from, you know, all your standard smartphones, your Androids, your iOS, your iPads, your Samsung Smart TV, your Pixelbooks, your Chromebooks, your Razer phones. Uh, folks turn up with a three-year-old uh, uh, Chromebook, and I go... <laughs> Try this, and I'm like getting 60 frames per second because, of course, I'm not doing much in the browser. I'm throwing it all up onto the GPU. If it's got a chipset, it's running uh, very performant. And the nice thing is, is my interface, it's responsive because I'm not, res- I'm not pushing, uh, I'm not pushing uh, commands up to a server that's running a sim and then uh, compressing video and sending compressed video down. Folks, I've shown my demo to my friends who are technical three times, and they go, so you're, you're not compressing video. <laughs> I'm not, I've told you how many I'm rendering in the browser is in the it, GPU. Are, you, are there some references to other things out there, like Google Stadia or well, like a... Uh, Stadia is one of many mm-hmm. that are doing it. We've seen OnLive in the past and, of course, Gaikai. And it's great for folks who have uh, really good connections, mm-hmm. who are, don't want to do the installs, don't want to do all that. There's a place for that. But it doesn't reach 2 billion people. It reaches a fraction of 2 billion people today, and it grows to two, three billion people perhaps over the next 10 or 20 years. Mm -hmm. What I like about what I'm doing is though my game is simple in looks, complex in gameplay, it will run on those two billion devices, you know, as soon as I release it. Mm -hmm. And how are you getting this uh, platform out? You're going to share it with other developers? Yeah, so I was working on all this code, right? And I'm building all these systems, especially stuff that gets really like into like the Linux operating system and VMs and, you know, things like uh, uh, game server instance monitor system. So if a, a GSI goes down, it props another one up and it moves the save data over to it so the, you know, play, the gameplay continues even when things fail. I thought, oh, the game developers don't want to work on all that stuff. But if they come to my platform, they can have access to all of that thinking and work that I've done uh, and get something up and running really quick. Mm-hmm. So that kind of led me. Now that's a few years out. I won't. I won't. Uh, I won't try to accelerate that until the game is. Uh, the game is a lot. My game is released and running and really hammering out all the little things you. Because you know when you go to scale, it everything starts breaking. Right. Nobody's. <laughs> nobody's foolish enough to believe that if it works on a dozen or a hundred, or it'll work on a million. Mm-hmm. So uh, I guess maybe some of your hardest core fans might be expecting some kind of 3D thing, I guess, right? That's a great question, yeah. I mean, I don't want to disappoint them. Certainly this platform could do 3D. I've learned that, you see, because I, was, I, was, I didn't want to bite too much off when I started. Mm-hmm. So I said, well, just Chris, just, just focus on core gameplay and don't worry about flashy graphics. That's not what this is about. But I realize now I could easily do a game like Total Annihilation probably a game like uh, a simple version of Supreme Commander in this technology. So really it can handle it. Maybe that's a V2.0 mm-hmm. uh, game experience on the platform. Mm-hmm. But uh, this first one, I think people get a kick out of it. Right? So get it out there first and see, see how that goes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and get, mm-hmm. kind of prove the system out a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. this is kind of really, this is new. And when you tell folks, I mean, they don't believe it and they don't get excited about it. And I think, is that a good thing? Maybe that's a good thing. Because if, you, if you're in the mountains picking away, and you go, oh my god, is that gold? And then everybody shows up. You're like, well, maybe that wasn't the best thing to do. But in a way, I am here today to kind of say, look, there's gold in this, these mountains. And there's a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And it's called attention at deficit disorder world that doesn't have time to do anything anymore. And if they can get an experience by clicking one link in an article they read about a game, and next thing you know, they're fighting aliens in another galaxy in three seconds, I think that's a pretty compelling uh, discovery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're reinventing yourself again, and you've done this uh, a few times. Like, what, what kind of process have you gone through in the last Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a craving to do something fresh and new, and I'm a technology guy. I love technology, and I kind of marry it. And so I can't, you, can't, you have to do it. Uh, there's nothing worse than doing the same thing every day of your life. Oh, that's just, it's like a, it's like a sentence for a crime you don't know what you, the crime you committed. You're just like, why am I doing this? You know, you're driving to work every day, and you're seeing the same trees and the same signs, and you're like, uh, Groundhog Day comes to mind. You gotta, you gotta do something different. Even if you don't make a bunch of money, it's not all about the money. God, man, I'm tired of, I'm tired of money. And sometimes it's about art, and it's about 
life experiences and mm -hmm. friends, and it's about so many other things besides just money. You get this uh, side business with pottery too, right? Yeah. I, I did, I've written, I designed games for 30 years professionally, and I started doing pottery seven years ago, and it's like all anyone remembers about me. That's what will be on my tombstone. <laughs> there lies a, or whatever, a, a, a sort of decent potter, you know, <laughs> who, who hacked away at it in his spare time. <laughs> yeah, games. So uh, just to uh, uh, close in, like, uh, is there a roadmap for the game and the platform? Like how yeah. long before it's in it? Well, yeah, it's, it's, I feel like to the absolute like, ribbon on the end of this thing, final, final sort of V1O, it's about 24 months out. But I'm going to be starting betas for friends. You know, friends and family has already kind of started, like folks that just won't just send me hate mail. And then you know, somewhere in the 10 to 12 months time frame, opening it up to folks that I run into very casually. Uh, and then opening up to public betas in you know the 14 to 18 month time frame. So, you know, it's it's definitely the kind of thing that you want to slowly open the open the valve. You don't you know you don't want to go public with something like this day one. You want to you want to grow it slow regionally and so forth. You want to raise money and divert that into pottery or? Yeah, I'm gonna. It's basically a cover, a scam <laughs> for pottery money. <laughs> for all of you who would love to get into pottery. Clay costs nothing, so um, you probably won't end up in prison for uh, doing anything related to your pottery. Um, but uh, what I'm looking for, honestly, is great partnerships. Folks that aren't just looking for a, a business opportunity, people who love games and who love technology and doing something new, those kind of partnerships is what I think I would love to, uh, love to build going forward. Well, it sounds like uh, it could be uh, a game changer if, uh, if this all works out. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and, and believe me, when you come and you talk about something, it makes you go home and work a lot harder because it's kind of like you're making a commitment, you know? And I think that's good. It's time. It's been two years of sitting, programming away on my laptop. And uh, yeah, I just use a little 15-inch 15 15-inch 15 MacBook Pro. I just love it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and now it's time to get it all the way to the finish line. And, uh, and hopefully you guys will come along for the ride at some point. Write me an email, um, uh, join beta at, uh, at uh, Kanugi, and I'll and get the you. The website should be live. The website site should be live. It's not much of a website. I literally threw it together. I tried to do something completely fun. You know, you want to go to Wix and, or do something with all this turnkey stuff, and I'm like, no. I wrote up something on Canvas that just spins the letters around and then gives you a couple of email addresses. So if you're interested, write me an email. Mm -hmm. okay. It all goes to me. That's how big the operation is. So we got 30 seconds. Anybody got a question uh, to ask, uh, Chris? Sure. You know, when browser changes come along. Uh, yeah. That's the interesting question. Like every time a browser is updated from any of the, the, the you know, whether it's uh, Safari or Opera or Edge or, or, or Chrome, you have to have it, you have to test. So you have to get the early releases of it and you have to push it through all the testing. Anything new in advance, like one thing is WebAssembly. WebAssembly is really awesome, right? Uh, and that's gonna be something that I'm gonna switch all of the client side stuff over to WebAssembly for all the browsers that are WebAssembly compliant, which they're not all there yet. It's still early days, but it's probably within, I don't know, 12 to 24 months. Um, but you can still ask the browser what it is and then ship it down the code that runs on it. And then folks who have the hottest, latest browser will get the extra boost in performance. But it's, like I said, it's already running at 60 frames a second. So, I mean, you know, it, it's those, if you played any Total Annihilation or Supreme Commander when you had massive, massive armies smashing together and it was just, the whole screen was just insane with stuff, right? Like, I mean, I can basically do that now in, in a web browser. That's Chris yeah. Taylor, Born Again. <laughs>